Hello brothers and sisters, welcome back for the second video on this channel. I encourage you if you haven't checked out the first video, please go back, check it out, kind of get an idea of what my messages are going to be about. So this channel, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to start speaking about the things that we are taught in church and by other people that are just simply not biblical or simply just a piece of the truth and not the whole truth and these false prophets and false lies have been spread out into all kinds of churches even churches that believe that they're doing the will of god that are not doing the will of god it's the enemy has come to kill still and destroy and deceive he is very good at it. satan is second to the lord at once upon a time he was he was second to the lord which is what caused him to rise in pride and fall he's very good at his job and he is everywhere, he rules the world, and we have to be aware of the issues that he brings into our churches and our homes. So the message today is titled, Jesus Vending Machine. The reason why it's titled that is because I believe that we have turned Jesus Christ and God into our own personal vending machine. We believe that once you become a Christian, that everything is going to be fine, that God loves us and that and that he's going to have mercy on us and like we're his we're we're his prized possession so that means that nothing bad's going to happen or when bad things happen we question our faith and we question God and we question this and we question that that's simply the wrong way of looking at things you have to remember that God is the creator of the universe brothers and sisters the, he is the creator of the universe. He deserves to be respected, admonished, and loved as such. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. To die for you. Jesus Christ died for you. He sent his son here, who was brutally beaten and hung on a cross for your sins by the religious leaders, by the leaders of the church. It wasn't the pagans. It wasn't the unbeliever. It was the people who called themselves men of God are the ones that killed the Son of God. History repeats itself, church. It's happening all around us. The Bible said many will come in my name and deceive many, many false prophets. It says it a bunch in the Bible. Fun fact, 30%, 30% of Scripture is prophesying the end of times. 30%. There's 30% of the entire word was warnings. We need to wake up and start paying attention to these warnings. Satan is good at his job, church. And he's wormed his way into our churches and into our homes. When bad things happen in our life, we blame them on God. We treat God like a vending machine. When, I need, when I'm hungry, or when I want that candy bar I don't really need, or I just want something, I'm going to get on my knees and ask and put my prayer coin in the vending machine and expect God to spit what I want out. We only want to claim God when it fits into our life. When it doesn't fit into our life, we disclude him. That's not being a Christian. That's not truly accepting his son. That's not truly living your life the way we're supposed to. People don't like the truth. People don't like to be corrected. People call it judgment. It's not judgment, church. It's it's correction. Read your Bible and understand. When Paul and the apostles spread the gospel, they would go set up a church and then they would write them letters and be like, hey, I hear that you guys are sinning and you're doing this. Remember what the word says. We do it out of love because if, you do, if you're going to bring God's wrath and punishment on you, we are his children. The Bible says, I, re I rebuke and I chastise and I... I Punish those I love. Just like your kids. If you love your kids, you correct your kids and you teach your kids. No, this is what happens when you do that. 
If you do that, you bring trouble upon your, yourself. You bring pain into your life. Stuff that you don't really need. God treats us the same way. We have to remember that things are going to happen. Struggles are going to happen. But pay, like the Bible says that patience and endurance leads to salvation and repentance, which leads to righteousness. And we have to be clothed in the righteousness of God to enter into the kingdom of God. We have to be clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And the only way we can be clothed is by accepting him into our life as Lord of our life and live by his standards. If you love him, you keep his commandments. He said that if you love me, if you love me, just do what I ask. If you're in a relationship with someone, don't you want them to do, give you what you need? Don't you expect them to take your feelings and emotions into consideration? Because after all, especially if you're married, they're your spouse. They're supposed to love you and give you and accept you for who you are. That's why they married you. Why do you think that the Bible talks about the church being the bride and Christ is the groom? It's a holy union between the church and Christ. And we need to start treating it as such. Christ loves us, but we if we love him, we will respect him. We will do what he asks us to do. And trust me, brothers and sisters, read this, the gospel and understand. We're not supposed to even talk bad about brothers and sisters behind their backs. We're not supposed to be gossipers and slanderers and mockers. We're not supposed to even stand around and partake in, in coarse joking. That's not acceptable for God's holy people. That's not ex acceptable for the church. We're not of this world. We have to stop living in it, partaking of it. We have to. Do you serve the Lord or do you serve the world? Do you serve yourself or do you serve God? Do you serve the devil or do you serve God? Look at our social media. Look at our, our music. Look at our video game entertainment. Everything is controlled by the powers of the world. Predictive programming, suggestive programming, subliminal messages. And people think you're crazy when you talk about it, but it's in our faces every day. We've talked about it before. Look at the old Disney movies. Look at look at Pinocchio. We've talked about this, and I know you've heard about it. All the little boys got took into an island called Pleasure Island. Then you have Jeffrey Epstein, who has a place called Pedophile Island. Like, there's too many coincidences, people. Church, it's right there. The Bible tells us that the truth will be shouted from the rooftops. That the things done in secret could not be done in secret. That they will be shouted from the rooftops because God will bring the truth out to warn us. Jesus said, how can you look at the sky and predict the weather, but not look at the signs and predict the times? It's important, church, for us to be rooted in the word of God and have a personal relationship with him. Or we will be deceived. Satan wants you to think it's okay to go to church and say, Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen to a 30-minute sermon and then go home and never pick up your Bible. Go home and never really pray to God, not unless you're asking Him for something. We only go to the Lord when we want something. We only go to God. We need something. When's the last time you, you got on your knees and the only thing you prayed was praise? When is the, when's the last time you got on your knees and you said, God, you are everything. You created everything. And you deserve honor and glory and all the praise of the people. When's the last time you got on your knees and said, God, thank you. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my home. Thank you for the food that I have. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you, Lord, for getting me to work safe. When's the last time that you actually prayed and you're like, God, I need help today. And he answers your prayers. And then when he does, you're like, Father, thank you. And you mean it from your heart. It's got to come from the heart, not just your mouth and not just your brain. Your soul and your heart. You have to speak with emotion and feeling. 
out of love. That's why people that don't believe in the Lord, some people don't even believe in love because we can't see it. We can't touch it. We can't. People say they don't believe in God because they can't see him. Well, you can't see love. You can't test love. You don't know where, where love comes from, not unless you believe in the Lord. And only true love comes from the Lord. We have to stop treating Jesus and God like a vending machine. We have to start treating God and Jesus like he's the most important thing in our life because he is. We have to start giving Christ the respect he deserves. If we love him, we will do what he says. It's not an option for us. He gave it all. But there's no greater love than this, that a man will lay his life down for his friends. I don't call you my servants. I call you my friends. So I will go to the, I will go to the cross and I will lay down my life for you. All I ask is you to do the same in return and show me you love me just as much as I loved you and lay down yourself for me. Lay down your wants and your desires and what you think is right and accept that God is the most high God and he is my father and I have come from him. And the only way you will have a relationship with him is through me. And that's living a life after me. We've got to stop going to church on Sunday and thinking that we check that box and we can just do what we want Monday through Friday. If you know you, that we shouldn't be getting drunk, we need to stop getting drunk. If you know you need to stop cussing, you need to stop cussing. If you know you need to stop smoking, you need to start sp stop smoking. If you need to stop looking at pornography and cheating and lusting after other women when you're married or you're not married, you have to stop. You have to pray to God and believe that he's enough to help you with those things. That's what we need to be praying about, church. We need to be praying about the things that hold us back. We need to pray and stand on the word and say, Jesus Christ died for my sins and I no longer am bound. He broke every chain. We sing about it in church, but we don't stand on it. We talk about it in church, but we don't act it. That's what the devil wants. Christians shouldn't be suffering from depression. Christians shouldn't be down in the dumps because we won. The victory is won. It's time for us to start acting like that. The world is falling apart around us and we need to make a stand. We need to stop being quiet. We need to stop being lukewarm, idle Christians that stand on the sidelines and just be like, well, it doesn't affect my life, so who cares? It does. We were called children of God. We were called to be the light of the world through Christ, the light of the world, which is Christ shines through us because we live a life just like Christ did. We strive to live a life like Christ did. Radical transformation. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb. The word of God and the power of our testimonies. There can be no power of your testimony if you're continuing to live in sin. It can't happen, church. So I want to take this to the scripture. I have three things I want to read. And I, I know that I've talked about this before in the last video. I don't believe in picking and choosing little bits and pieces of scripture. Here's, here's Matthew chapter 6 verse 4 says this. Because the devil did that to Christ in the desert. The devil picked out verses to back his story, to blur the line, to make himself seem like he was godly. That's not what we do. We read the gospel cohesively. We, lead, we read the gospel from front to back. We read the message from front to back. We don't pick and choose the gospel to fit your lifestyle. That's not God. That's not. That is the work of the devil. That is smearing the line between black and white. We are going to read a chunk of the gospel 
and see what the entirety of the message that Jesus is trying to get across. Because it's important that we don't pick and choose. So, today I want I found it very fitting that I wanted to I wanted to speak out of John 3. And yes, we're going to get to John 3:16, and this is the reason why because I'm going to prove to you in John 3 why it's important to not just pick and choose a chunk of scripture to fit what you think is is right. So let's start in John 3. We're going to read from verse 1 and we're going to go all the way to 21. We're going to read 21 verses, not just one, not just two. 21 verses. So here we go. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish royal council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can perform the signs you are doing if God was not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now can some, how can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Thinking of the worldly things. Even Nicodemus and the Pharisees said that they seen Jesus came from God. But they didn't even know who he really was. So let's continue. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, and, but you, can't, you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So is it with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Jesus said, You are Israel's teacher, and you do not understand these things. He's the teacher of the Word of God, and he doesn't understand the Son of God trying to explain the basic principles of being a Christian. So you think it's impossible for preachers and teachers to, Today, to get it wrong, for us to get it wrong, they did it then, and Jesus was standing in front of them. How much harder could it be when Jesus is not physically standing in front of you? Really think about it. Take it. You have to read the Bible and realize that if you believe in the Word of God, you believe in God, it is history. This actually happened. And the teacher of the Bible and the Word didn't even didn't even get it. How do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify of what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. You see it. I'm doing things. I'm healing people. You see it, and yet you still don't believe. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except for one who has come out of heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so will the Son of Man be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. We speak of earthly things all the time, and people don't understand. That's why God doesn't reveal more truth to us because we can't even understand the simple things, just like Nicodemus here. Now, here's the famous one. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear their deeds will be exposed. 
But whosoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that they may see, see, be seen plainly for what they have done in the sight of God. That is very important. We quote, Whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. I believe Jesus. I confess it with my mouth. I'm good. No. There's way more to it than that. Let's read that again. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear their deeds will be exposed. But whosoever love, lives by the truth, the truth, the word, whoever lives by the truth, the word, and Jesus, Jesus said, I am truth. Pilate said, what is truth? And Jesus said, I am truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father but by me. Whoever lives by the truth will come into the light so they may be seen plainly for what they have done in the sight of God. If you are children of God and you claim to be a Christian, you shouldn't have a problem being corrected by the word of God. You shouldn't have a problem confessing your sins. You shouldn't have a problem saying, yeah, I struggle with this brother, can you help me? If a brother or sister judges you, they're not of, of God or they're sinning in God and they will pay for that. We're not to judge one another. We're supposed to love and build one another up. We are quick to say, oh, you come at me and say that I'm doing something bad and you're judging me. I'm not judging you, brother. I'm not judging you, sister. God will judge you. I just know God will judge you and I want to help you overcome. Because we've already overcome. Stop letting sin rule your life. We are children of the light. Stop living in darkness and step forth into the light and be changed. Allow God to break the chains. Lay them down. Live by the truth. So what is this supposed to look like when you put it together? So we're going to go back to John 1. And we're going to put it together. This is what happens when you live your life as a Christian and you don't treat Jesus like a vending machine. How we're supposed to go to him in prayer. How we're supposed to act. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. If we ask anything in according to his will, ask anything in accord with accordance to his will, his will, not yours, his. He hears us, and we know that he hears us. And whatever we ask, we know we will have what we ask of him. If it's in accordance to his will, because he's God, he knows best, not you. If you see any brother or sister committing a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and ask God to give them life. I refer to those sins that do not lead to death. There is sin that leads to death, and I am not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that, that does not lead into death. There are some little minor sins. We don't need to be standing there pointing out every bad thing that everybody does. That's not what we're supposed to do. But when you see someone going down a path that's going to lead them to pain, suffering, that will lead them to death, inside their mind and emotionally and, and even physically. You see someone struggling and they're falling and they're going to get hurt. Be a brother, be a sister and help them. Just like you would if you seen somebody that you knew standing on the side of the road that needed a ride or you see a, someone you know and their cars broke down or someone had broke their leg and they need their grass mowed. It's no different when someone, because you know what? Physical things, we treat them like they're such a big deal. And those are, those are good. That's good. Don't get me wrong. But spiritual things are so much worse. Because spiritual death means separation from God. Spiritual death means pain and suffering for your brother and your sister. Could, and it could last years. Trust me, I know what happens when you run from the Lord and no one stands there and corrects you and you won't take correction. I have 10 years of life and a lot of bad decisions. I've been there. I'm not judging you. I have a testimony of my own. I just want you to see 
that if we if we start thinking about heavenly things and things that God wants and we put him first over ourselves, he will heal us. And trust me, a life of joy and peace of the Lord is so much better than anxiety and depression. I know from ex experience. So let's go back to this. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. One who is born of God keeps them safe. The evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God. And that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. He says it. The devil runs the world. And we cannot continue to live in his deceit, temptation, and sin. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true for being the Son of Jesus Christ. He is the true God in eternal life. Dear children, keep yourself from idols. We think of idols as like, which they did back then. They worshipped Baal and different gods but mankind also used to worship material metal stone wood because it brought them value it brought them riches and money so they used to worship them today we don't worship those things as much some people still worship money and we all know that the love of money is the roots of all sorts of evil so if we love money more than the lord it will cause us to sin and lead us to death because it's greed seven deadly sins it's in the bible we know that pornography will lead to adultery. The Bible is very clear that those who, who lust will lead to death. Gluttony will lead to death. Sloth will lead to death. Vengeance and wrath will lead to death. Envy will lead to death. Being envious of someone will lead to death. We can't make an idol of anything. We idolize pop stars, movie stars, TV shows, other people. The only person that needs to be idolized is God. And what does idolize mean? You look up to them and you want to be like them. It's time that we idolize our God and Jesus Christ. We need to start living our lives like them and want to be like them. And this is why it's so important. I've read this verse, these verses in this chapter a million times. But God led me into a new truth today, and I want to share it with you. We're in, and I'm sorry I didn't mention before, we were in John 5. So if you want to reference those, I'm going to post all of those in the description below. So I encourage you to go back and read those chapters and try to pray for God to give you understanding and wisdom. Fact check, facts, facts check what I'm doing. I encourage you to, I want you to. I want you to seek the truth. So Matthew 12, starting in 25. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? And if, it, and if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. We know that we have to be standing firmly in the Lord. We can't be divided against God. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the Lord be divided between the two and expect to stand any struggle, any problem, anything. But here is the truth that I missed. Because if we get so caught up in just a few verses, we don't get the whole message. Or again, if anyone enters a strong man's house to carry off his possessions, unless he ties up the strong man first, then he can plunder into the house. How can a thief come into your home? And Jesus mentions this multiple times. How can a thief come into your home and ruin it and steal things if you're up watching? If your alarm systems are set? If you're ready to be, if you've got protection up? Who's he talking about? He's talking about sin. He's talking about the devil. He's talking about temptation. Who's the strong man? It's not you. It's 
God. It's the Lord. He's our defense. He is our fortress. The devil can't come in unless he ties up God first. The devil can't come in until he divides you against your father. He can't. He has no power over the father. Sure, the devil one day during tribulation will have power over our bodies, but our bodies, like Paul says, are just tents for our spiritual being. This flesh suit doesn't mean nothing. It's the car that I drive until the mileage runs out and I go home. It's not who I am. It's not my soul. The devil can't come into your homes, brothers and sisters, unless he ties up God first and divides you against him. And like we said, like I've said many times, it only takes one drop of oil to contaminate a water supply. It only takes a little bit of sin that you allow. You have to, sometimes we sin and we don't even realize we're making a mistake until God's like, hey, look what you're doing. You're like, oh, God, you're right, I'm sorry. Or you're, you're, it's why it's so important we don't get mad at each other. We don't be argumentative like the Bible says. Why we got to be the Christians the gospel says to be. My wife came to me today with an issue and I could have chose to got mad. Because trust me, my human mind, it wants to. But what did I do? I went and I prayed and I asked the Lord for guidance and he gave it to me. He's the strong man, the defender. We have to live by his word. Sometimes we don't want to. But Satan's trying to divide his children away from their father so we can come in and kill, steal, and destroy. He's the thief that's breaking into our homes and corrupting them one little bit at a time. Termites are little bitty bugs, but they can do a lot of damage. Sometimes sin are, are, is tiny, but it will multiply and infest and destroy. Brothers and sisters, please, I plead with you more than anything. Let's stop treating Jesus like a vending machine. Let's stop treating God like he fits our needs. And we don't honor him and reverence him as the sovereign Lord over everything in all creation like we say we believe. If we believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, we need to stop treating him terribly in this relationship. And this union, this holy union between Son of God and children, the bride and the groom. We need to honor him. The Bible says, what do you do with a husband? You submit and you honor them and respect them. That's what it tells you to do. And that's why God references his son as the bridegroom. And we are the bride. We are to submit and honor him as such. And love him and keep his commandments. He is the head of the house. And we need to respect him as such. I love you guys. All of you. I don't care who you are. We're all created in God's image. And we need to start acting like it. I'm not here. Just like Christ said. He didn't come into the world to condemn the world. But to save it. That's how we're supposed, we're supposed to live like him. I'm not coming at you to condemn you. I'm coming at you in Christ telling you to stop believing the lies and to stop putting yourself in what you think God should do and be before he needs to be first. He needs to be first. I love you guys. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, please reach out to somebody in your life that does. Please reach out to somebody you trust that you know is a Christian. And if you don't have anyone Please reach out to me. I have an email, Mr. Common Sense Christian altogether at gmail.com. Send me an email. I'd love to get back with you. I'll post the scriptures in the, in the description below. And guys, just know that things are going to get better in the world. Things are going to continue to get worse because God said they were, would. And when they start talking peace and prosperity, we need to watch out and start looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that there's not going to be peace on earth to the thousand year reign after seven years of the worst time the world's ever seen. So don't be fooled. We have to, be st we have to stand ready and keep our lamps burning because the bridegroom's coming for the bride. 
I love you guys, and I hope that this message speaks to you. And I want to pray for you guys. And like I said, if you don't know Jesus, please find someone that can help you. Father, thank you for the message today. Lord, thank you for your words. And I'm thankful that we have the scriptures, Lord, to go back to to learn of you. And I pray, Lord, that everyone that's watching today that gets touched by you, Father. I pray that your Holy Spirit meet them wherever they're at. And Lord, that you lead them into the truth that they don't have to take my word or anyone's word for it. That Lord Jesus died to tear that veil between this world and in heaven and they can have that personal relationship with you where the Holy Spirit will lead them into all truth. So Lord, I pray that you're with us all and you continue to lead us all in wisdom and understanding into the truth. Be with your children and may your son be glorified through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Until next time.